in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm going to do a video today um, about a couple of things and the first thing I'm going to talk about is what you're seeing right here. This is one of the Chinese uh, shoe patch machines which is a um, kind of a different design or uh, uh, the way they're made uh, in reference to the uh, Singer 29-4 shoe patch machine and I'm going to show you how these work um, and principally toward the goal of trying to encourage anybody who's uh, working with leather uh, and putting patches on things like motorcycle vests that this is something that can benefit you in your area. You can make money with these. Now where I got this one is off of eBay and who you buy it from is strictly up to you. So ask questions uh, about uh, this, that, and the other thing regarding these machines. But I'm going to show you how it sews and what I use it for in my leather shop. If you are working your way toward um, using machines to, sh to sew leather instead of hand sewing things, which is the principal reason why I got this machine so that I could have it portable and I could sew inside things where uh, ordinarily I would have had to hand sew them. Uh, this machine allows you to machine sew something inside it. And this is the reason I bought this machine. It is the this is a close-up situation. The camera is right up next to me, and so is the machine. But this is one of the Evil Roy. Here it is. This is one of the Evil Roy butt covers that I make, and I have two of them here. Okay. Here's the other one, and they're both custom orders. This one has uh, the initials U.S. on it, and this one here has D.F. on it, and this one here has an American flag. This gentleman here didn't want an American flag on his, so I left it off. This one here has the American flag, if you can see it right there. There's the window for the Evil Roy. This is also, and an, to update the uh, Evil Roy videos that you may have looked at uh, before you caught this one, I have now positioned this window over for the newer rifles where Henry moved the Evil Roy engraving position on the buttstock forward. So if you have an, a newer rifle, a later rifle, if you want to call it that, then uh, you have to tell me that if you're going to order one of these so I can use the right pattern. I have two patterns, one for the old one, one for the new one. Okay. So here is the reason why I wanted the shoe patch machine. Right here, showing it to you right close, is the sewing line right here that I had to hand sew prior to getting this machine. Okay, Now I have a Singer 29-4 which I just acquired, had refurbished, and then would not sew. So she's on her way to Plymouth, Michigan right now to a gentleman named Pete Pacific who sells his services on eBay. So if you're looking to get um, a 29-4 and you're having and you get one and you're having problems with it sewing consistently properly because she's worn out most 29-4 uh, shoe cobbler machines are over 100 years old mine is a 1913 edition so when I had her refurbished cleaned up and made beautiful by a friend of mine she wouldn't sew because her internal parts were worn out so when I found Pete on eBay, and I've talked to him on the phone a couple of times, uh, he's up in Plymouth, Michigan, uh, you will um, want to be sewing, say, excuse me, you will want to be sending your machine to Pete so he can rework all your internal parts and make her sew again. So I'm waiting for her to come back, and when she comes back, I will do a video with her. But for the time being, I'm using this uh, shoe patch machine, Chinese made, to sew this line. Okay, right here. Okay, right there. 
and this is how it goes on the machine. Let's talk about the machine first before I, I sew a sample for you, okay? These machines are rough, okay? When you get one, you're going to find that you're going to have to modify it. And one of the modifications that I had to do on this one, let me get a little closer right here and a little tighter, okay? Right in here, because there's the working guts of this machine. This is the sewing foot area right here. Let me get up as tight as I can and still stay in focus. I have a monitor right here which shows me that I'm in focus. Okay, this is the cover plate. Okay, this is the shuttle carrier which is inside holding the bobbin. And I'm not going to take it out right now because it's a little tricky to get it in and out and I don't want to fumble. But right over here, and let me get my tweezer because you are definitely going to need a tweezer just like this one right here. You need a tweezer to move things around and get this in and out. Okay, and right here, okay, is a groove, and I have to have the camera on the left side, not on the right, because of the way the shop is set up. You're going to have to have a Dremel, and and cut this one down because it's very very small. If you have a Dremel, um, which you need to have a Dremel in a leather shop, and get yourself one of these little mini grinding sets and cut this out down so that this thread will lay across here let me get her out lay around here when you are getting ready to have uh, your needle catch the thread and pull it through as it came it was very very small I also had to clean up smooth out all the bobbins that came with it and, all, and the shuttle carrier and also, you're going to have to put a lot of oil into this machine, and you're going to have to run it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to close this up, click it, okay. Now it's ready to sew, and I'm going to widen back out again and show you a little bit more about the machine. What a shoe patch machine allows you to do is sew in any direction, okay, on your, on your uh, work without having to turn the work by turning the head just like this or not the head but the uh, the sewing foot okay and these are the hand the handles if you want to call them that the tabs is a good word that allow you to turn this around okay now here is an example of what I'm going to be using this for at gun shows I have her on a portable Okay, piece. There's two 2x4s, two a 1x4 running back to get the hand wheel up high enough so it doesn't hit the table. And then you have a hand crank back here. Let me see if I can show you this a little bit better. Also, there's a thread stand back there. It's in the shot. And back behind the fishing line is a cone of 138 thread. This machine will sew with 138 thread and 69 thread and smaller. And then I made a little rack for fishing line, which will allow you to sew with fishing line through through this. And it's tough stuff. It's monofilament. It can't tear. It can't yank like thread. And if you want something invisible and strong, uh, then you can use fishing line. Okay. So this is the threading wire for the machine. So I have this piece of plywood right here. I have an additional one, one by uh, four here, and two by two by fours to get her up high and forward, so that you can see. Okay, this bar right here is hanging off the table. Okay, it allows me to put things up on here. The twenty line four will have more punching power and and have better sewing consistency when I get her back, the singer, than this one does. This one occasionally will loop uh, a stitch. And then you've got to go back with the pliers, find it, and yank it down. So I need better consistent sewing. But for the time being, I've got this one mastered. See, here's her, her uh, um, stitch yank pull up through here, through the um, needle bar uh, guide. That, it's not the needle bar, but the, the uh, where the thread goes straight down into okay, the needle bar. I guess it is a needle bar. And this is the, right here, let me get tighter again. Okay, 
there is the needle clamp. This machine uses uh, 15X1 needles, okay? Home sewing machine needles. It has the flat shank on it. And what I did was I had to cut a groove right in here, okay, where my fingernail is right now, so that when you thread it, the threader would take the thread down past it and make, you, make it available so you could grab it with your tweezers and thread it easier. Before I did that, needle clamp was in the way and it was hard to thread the machine. All right. So now, as I said, I have 138 thread in here. The bobbin thread is out. Okay. okay right there. Okay. Let's focus up, focus up, focus up. Doesn't want to focus. I'm a little too close, I think. There we go. All right. And here is, um, again, okay, just to show you that sewing line that I sewed with this. Now you're going to see a diff you're going to see a difference right here in thread. This thread right here is 207 thread that I sewed all around this butt cover on the edges to strengthen it up. Don't need eyelets in here because on the edges okay, get it to where you can see it properly. Here we go right to the camera I'm a lot, there we go okay this strengthens the edge so you can run latigo lace right through your holes and leather won't tear okay but this makes it even stronger okay but this and this is again 207 thread but you're going to see that right here I can't sew with 207 thread using this machine so I'm using 138 instead and also the stitch, I keep turning it so you can see it. Yeah, there we go. Get the light just right. So you can see the difference between the thread thickness and the thread or the stitch uh, spacing. I've got about four, maybe five stitches per inch on here, right there. But this is down to about, oh, maybe nine or ten stitches per inch which makes it very tight and this piece that's rolled over onto here is glued underneath first it's glued and clamped and it's holding of course in place and then I score a line right th through down here and then I just follow like because there's no guides on this and there's no guides on a 2942 so this allows me to hand crank this into a straight line Let's put that aside, okay, and here is, if you can see any of it, now it's too tight, can't do it, so I'm not going to do the motorcycle uh, vest right now, but it's obvious that this will allow you to sew inside things. You can slip things in here or over this, okay, it allows you to sew this right here. Now on a regular sewing machine, you have a bottom feed. There's no bottom feed here, okay, on these patcher machines. The feed comes from the teeth, which you can see real easily, on the bottom of the upper feed mechanism, okay. Now, these two pieces of leather that I have right here, okay, are scraps from having cut out these pieces to make the uh, butt cover. So I'm going to show you how it sewed. So here they are, right there. Now, if you'll notice, okay, here, let me set this needle right here and, and get your tails out so you don't have any bind or any loose stuff right here. I'm going to set the needle in here, okay? So there is. I'm pushing it through by push, pu uh, pushing the hand crank away from me, okay? And also, you got to make sure you're down. So I had the lever up. So the lever is down. So now the needle is set in the two pieces of leather. There, I'm holding on to the tails, okay? And the crank is out here, okay? And I'm going to turn the crank clockwise, pushing it away from me. And you're going to see the action of this as it sews, okay? Now, since I just got to the end, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to get halfway through a stitch which takes the pressure off. I have not used the lever over here to um, raise the foot. I raised the foot by being mid-stitch and I can use the tabs. Let's loosen up a little bit. Raise up. There we go. And I can use the tabs to turn this foot around and, and the, the work stays right where it is and this now is in the opposite direction. Okay, And I'm mid-stitch. Now, it's just like driving a car. Once you get to doing this uh, on a regular basis, it'll you know, your movements uh, with your hands and the crank will become semi-automatic to automatic and you'll start doing it without even thinking about it as you want to change direction. So now I've changed direction okay, and I'm sewing over what I sewed before okay, okay, and of course she's jamming up on me because she's not a very precise machine but there she goes okay, and she's sewing okay, and in fact she put a pressure on the thread and she broke it. So hang on for a second while I do a quick pause and I'm going to rethread the machine. Okay, we are back. All right. So I rethreaded the machine and I now have her sewing and I double checked her so we don't F up again. And here we go. Okay, so you've got to get a consistent rolling going and when you first get one of these machines roll it. Put a lot of oil in it, up in the head, uh, all over the place. If you are mechanically inclined and know how to take things apart, there are parts you might want to take off, smooth up, put back, just like when you work on a weapon. Okay. Now I've gotten down to the end and here what I want to show you is I'm going to turn this back around again here and go back in the opposite direction. I'm going to veer off so I don't sew over what I so was sewing down. Okay, you saw me do that. Okay, by pulling this tab on here, and now I'm going to take her in reverse. Okay, so to speak, and sew back. And of course, she's doing it. What happened was it was a little too thick before, and it jammed up a little bit, broke the thread, and that was that. Now, there is her stitch length right there. You can see from the thread, I'm getting, let me look down on it, I'm getting about one, two, three, four, five, six, about, I'm getting about seven stitches per inch here, which is pretty good. And in fact, it can be a little longer, but I like to leave my setting where it is so I don't mess things up. Okay, You can make it tighter and you can make it a little bit longer than this, but when you do that, if, if depending upon how your machine has uh, been manufactured, um, you get to a zero spot and then it won't sew. In other words, it just goes up and down in one spot and it won't move. But I think what I can do here for you is I can show you by pulling, screwing down, there is a screw right there. That's the stitch length screw. Okay, that's the stitch length screw. So let's see if by running it down what I've done. No, I made it longer. So you run it down and you make it longer. So that is its longest. Uh, let me pull this up. There's a lever back here that raises the foot, keeps it locked up. And what I'll do after I'm done sewing is I'll take this off and I'll show it to you. So let's put this down. Okay. And now I'm sewing on a right angle to what I was just sewing. Oh, in the wrong direction. Let me get her back up again. Up. Okay. Turn her back the other way. Okay. And now let's get back over here. Okay. To this side. Then I'm going to raise it up, turn it again so I can go back down the length of the material. Okay. This appears to be, I think, its longest possible stitch. 
and this one is one, two, three, four, about four and a half to five stitches per inch. Now, let's raise it back up again. See, now I'm, I'm screwing it in, okay, to there. Okay, now let's see what we get. Okay. Okay, now it has shortened up. Okay, and it is showing. Okay. So if you want to sew tight, okay, there that is. This is very tight. Okay. So let's raise it or run it back down again about one whole turn. Okay. Come on, baby. One more turn, okay, and she has lengthened out a little bit. Let's take her down another full turn. And while I'm here, and it's see, it's it's not up from the lever, uh, the the permanent lever. It is just mid stitch. So let's turn this back around again, and I'm going to sew right toward you. Okay. You can hear that there are hitches in this, but if you get a good consistent roll with your hand, and you got a lot of oil in there, eventually she'll wore, wore down, wear down some more. And I've only had her about two and a half weeks now, and right now she's sewing at about... Oh, nine stitches per inch. So that's good for fabric, okay, and for leather. And, and also, this is a number 22 needle. You can find them on eBay if you look. So this is a, a class a 15X1 home sewing machine needle. And the opening in the eye is rated at number 22. They're also called 140 slash 22s, okay, in the 15X1 class needles, okay. So, that is sewing with a Chinese shoe patcher. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out of here. I'm going to raise the needle up out of it. And also, very, very important point, okay? Oh, the bobbin just, look at that. Bobbin just ran out of thread. They're very small bobbins, so I act just lucky. I got right down to the end of this and the bobbin ran out of thread. So you need to take the tension off of the upper thread by pulling down on it up here. It's on the opposite side of the machine, so it's hard. I can't show it to you. But you just put your finger on it and pull it down and get it loose like laundry line and then cut it free. Okay, I'm going to cut this free. And I'm going to zoom back a little bit. And I'm going to show it to you. Okay. So this is the sewing sample. Let me get rid of these extra threads. So they don't hang all over the place. Okay. And I'll show you the back of it too. Okay, here we go. All right. Two pieces of, oh, this is four or five leather. Okay. So this is, this is a total of about, 10 ounces of leather, right there. And here is, get it centered and the light on it properly. Here's where we started, okay? Okay, right here, coming down this one, turning around, going back over there. This is the longest stitch that she can do without zeroing out and stopping, uh, not sewing, which is about four, four and a half, maybe, to five. Okay, and then we started, I started messing around with uh, uh, the stitch length screw and it got it real short right there, or right there. Let me get something that points better. Okay, here, this one right here. Okay, this line. And I got down here and uh, turned around and uh, ran the screw back up again and then we got back over to this. There's about four different stitch lengths on here, five actually. 
So you can see that you can sew through this leather. As long as your needle is sharp and it'll punch through the leather and you maintain a consistent roll on the uh, hand wheel, then you will not have any problems with this machine if you keep it oiled, okay? But you must be consistent. And what I'm going to do right now is take a short pause and reset the camera so you can show you the other side so you won't be saying to yourself, why doesn't the dummy show us the other side of the machine? So hang on for a minute while I pause this out. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Here is the other side of the machine. There is the hand crank, okay, which you always run in a clockwise direction. And then here's the arm coming down. And there is the head. Let me put my hand behind this so you can see it better since we got a very busy background. And you're seeing my TV monitor right there. So it's an open framed, okay, Chinese shoe patcher with a lot of standard hardware items on it. It's all open in springs. There is the thread tension, upper thread tension uh, discs and spring. Okay, this is the needle bar. Okay and the connection to what runs it. This is the take up spring. Okay. And then down in here, okay, is the foot you saw. Okay. Needle bar. Okay. And this is the loose thread. And as I said, the bobbin ran out right at the end of when I was making that sewing sample. So where you get your machine is up to you. And while I'm at it, let me show you this motorcycle pat, uh, vest. I did some repairs on this. I put new pockets in this uh, vest. It, they were all worn out. This vest is old. And she was made in Pakistan, so she has some pleather in her. And let me get down in here and show you what I did. Let me see if I can get a light. Camera's falling because I didn't screw it down when I took my hand off of the tripod. Okay, and let me get this light down in here so you can see what I'm showing you. Okay, here we, come on, where are you baby? Here we go. I made a new pocket out of ballistic nylon and dropped it in here. His pockets were shot, okay? And I cut them out and because I had this machine I was able to run her onto the arm and sew this line right in here using this machine. And while I was at it, same thing up in here. So I made a pocket just by taking a long piece of material, folding it over, sewing the edges, and then I got up in here and I worked this in. Okay. Did it on the opposite side too. While it was here, he had me add this Myrtle Beach uh, patch, which I did. And I slipped this over here, and this Myrtle Beach run that he went on recently for $2.15, uh, put that on there. And the other thing I did while I had her here was, okay, someone who did patches for him before made a big mess of this area in through here. Uh, and this is his dad's dad's name I got things falling down here so let me pull them back up okay all right um, this is his dad's uh, uh, name tag off off a field jacket or a uniform and it was cockeyed and coming up on top of this patch right here so I slipped all of this out of here with a seam ripper and a razor blade and I reset this in place and I moved this patch down and I also had to repair this patch because it was rotten and the seam ripper caught on it and um, made a little bit of a mess of this edging so all in all I reset his uh, his bad sewing on here all kinds of things were um, just fuzzing off so I used a flame torch cut off all the excess oh, and the other thing I had to do I almost forgot was he had an inside pocket too over here 
and somewhere way down inside there was a uh, hole and he would, if you put a small item in here it was falling into the patch and it was coming out of here so I closed up the uh, escape hole and then I made another ballistic nylon um, pocket and I dropped it into the, the existing pocket and the same thing the shoe patch machine made it possible for me to get in here and sew this back okay so I sewed this one here sew this one here and now when you put your hand in there you can feel the end of it it's got a solid ballistic nylon pocket um, I think they're around here somewhere let me see where they are here because I was going to give them back to him to show him how bad they were the original pockets and why they came apart here they are right here reach over okay the original pockets in this Pakistani made Harley Davidson motorcycle vest were made out of this stuff okay and it's some kind of material that has a motorcycle uh, motif on it but how they did this I have no idea this is where they ripped out right here it's a cotton type of material and they just didn't last and they ripped out so if you got a motorcycle vest that you can part with and you want new patches or pockets I'm sorry if you want new pockets or patches put on it and you want to send it to me uh, I can do that or if you're local in, uh, in the Raleigh Durham area then I can repair your motorcycle vest for you by putting new pockets in it okay if they've worn out okay and put patches on too um, sometimes while you wait so let's go back to the machine up here if you got any questions about how to use it how to how to maintain it or whatever there she is okay. and um, I do all gun shows at the uh, North Carolina State Fairgrounds and I will have this thing with me in the future like I said um, as of the beginning of June 2015 I've got this machine so there she is okay I've got her tweaked out figured out how to use her I gotta change needles when I put 69 thread in here because this 22 uh, is, hole is too big for 69 thread so I put an 18 in it uh, to sew with it and then occasionally I can use a fishing line in it too if I if I want something like that very versatile so anyway that's it from Raleigh North Carolina um, how to order gun belts uh, knife sheets and holsters and whatnot uh, all that information is on the end title of this uh, video butt covers too especially I can make them for all kinds of rifles I have stocks uh, for rifles you don't have to send me stocks anymore uh, I got them for 1894's I got them for 22 shotguns uh, Marlins um, and of course if you are in, again in, in the local area and you've got an oddball and you want me to fit it on there make make a butt cover fit it on there put it on there for you um, that would be great and of course there's my good old Evil Roy's here they are again here's that Evil Roy butt cover okay all finished out oh while I'm thinking about it since it's laying right here if you're a leather worker and you're uh, hand burnishing things okay, and you have a Dremel yeah, I gotta get a cord away from something here so I can pull this forward a little bit more I'm going to show you the burnisher that I use right now here we go this is a, a Dremel uh, or a burnisher to put on a Dremel and this guy is saving me so much time you have no idea and I have I ran it all over this thing Okay, because I've got wax on here, which is actually paste wax, and or shoe polish, which is wax. So I ran all these edges, inside out and all around, what this burnisher, and boy does it work good. Okay, so that's it. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover today. Let me find my camera remote and say goodbye one more time.
So thanks for watching. Have a great day from Raleigh, North Carolina. Bye-bye.